And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, CMV uh, as a potential mediator of persistent immune activation in treated HIV. Um, and uh, uh, this is, uh, after all, a, a, a workshop focused on the output uh, and, the, and the gains uh, from CIFAR mentored scientist grants. And so I, I picked a topic uh, as a direct uh, um, uh, consequence uh, uh, of a CIFAR mentored scientist award that I you know, got back in 2005. Uh, and I also point out that I was a mentee in the very first uh, CIFAR uh, mentoring program year uh, when, when Jim Kahn started uh, the original program uh, way back when. Uh, so uh, when I got my first uh, CIFAR mentored scientist grant, it was in, in part support of this study here, which um, was the observation that uh, despite uh, antiretroviral therapy mediated viral suppression in green, um, uh, 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 immune activation is measured by uh, the frequency of CD38 and HLADR expressing CD8 um, remain persistently abnormal uh, compared to HIV uninfected individuals in blue. Um, and uh, my interest at the time uh, was in these uh, persistent uh, adaptive immune defects that might uh, confer risk of infections and failure to respond appropriately to vaccines. Uh, and uh, around the same time, it was uh, uh, described by Guido Silvestri and others uh, that uh, immune activation had uh, been a, a key uh, defining feature of SIV pathogenesis. The simian immunodeficiency virus, where one of the strains of HIV came from, uh, these monkeys, um, the natural hosts of SIV, uh, uh, Sudi mangabees, uh, uh, when infected with the virus, experience high levels of virus replication, uh, uh, higher uh, uh, than, or as high, if not higher than we see in HIV infected people, uh, yet uh, they live a normal lifespan and don't get AIDS. Um, the same virus, however, in a, a different monkey, in this case the rhesus macaque, um, uh, experiences comparable levels of virus replication. Uh, but progresses very rapidly to AIDS and death. And so the difference between the two monkeys is not the virus. The virus is the same. Uh, it's rather the response of the immune system to the virus that determines how the monkeys um, do. The monkey on the left that doesn't get sick has very minimal levels of immune activation in the chronic phase of the infection, whereas the monkey on the right experiences massive uh, levels uh, of immune activation. And, um, uh, and those with the uh, most immune activation experience uh, the most rapid clinical progression. And this was being described by Janice Georgie and many others uh, in the context of untreated HIV infection as well as a key uh, predictor of, of, uh, of disease. And so uh, the natural question was what was driving uh, this persistent immune activation despite antiretroviral therapy? Uh, and uh, a little bit later on, uh, Lewis Picker's uh, group uh, was starting to describe the really remarkable effects of uh, CMV uh, on shaping the immune system. And, and so what he and his group did was uh, uh, characterize, fully characterize the, the complete uh, CMV-specific uh, uh, CD4 and CD8 T-cell response in otherwise healthy young adults uh, who were CMV seropositive. And, uh, basically, 10 percent of the entire circulating memory T cell repertoire is CMV specific and someone who's got CMV. That's probably about 60 percent of the people in the room here uh, uh, who are CMV seropositive. Uh, 10 percent, one out of every 10 T cells are responding to this virus that's causing no symptoms at all, uh, uh, but uh, causes this uh, lifelong uh, infection. Uh, and the situation was even worse in people with HIV, a much higher frequency, at least twofold higher uh, uh, of the T cells in circulation or CMV specific. Um, and uh, uh, these and many other uh, considerations led us to wonder whether CMV might be one of the things contributing to uh, immune activation and, and treated HIV infection. And this is um, my second um, uh, CIFAR mentored scientist uh, grant uh, contributed uh, to this. In fact, this is a combination of grants. For those of you who uh, have put together a clinical trial budget uh, before, you might get a chuckle out of this. Uh, uh, so this was um, 
uh, uh, this uh, study uh, uh, was basically funded by, by three separate small pilot uh, grants. The CFAR award, uh, of course, didn't fund the trial itself, but rather the, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the biomarkers uh, on the samples from the trial, to be clear for the regulators. Uh, but the, um, uh, it was a small pilot award from Roche, a small pilot award from the old GCRC, which later became the CTSI, um, uh, and the C4 uh, Mentor and Scientist Award. And uh, I had just gotten a K award, uh, which covered my salary. Uh, so this is really done on a shoestring budget. Um, and uh, what we did uh, is, uh, and, I, and I should also say, um, uh, that uh, we also leveraged uh, several other CIFAR cores of this study, the Clinical and Population Sciences Core, uh, Steve Deeks and Jeff Martin ran, the Core Immunology Lab and the Specimen Core. And with, with uh, the, the help of this um, uh, CIFAR-supported environment, um, uh, we, we did this uh, trial. Uh, we uh, screened 60 uh, uh, patients uh, 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 living with HIV with low CD4 counts despite uh, suppressive antiretroviral therapy, and they had high levels of immune activation. Uh, we eventually um, uh, uh, randomized uh, 30 of them and met inclusion criteria. We got eight weeks of Algan cyclovir placebo and followed with a, a four-week washout period. Uh, these are the baseline characteristics of the people that were in that study. Uh, most were men uh, in, uh, around the age of 50. Uh, you can see they had a, a median quite uh, a CD4 count that was quite low. There were, uh, most of them were art suppressed, though we had a few uh, with detectable viremia at the time. Um, and this is the key result that we published back in 2011 that um, uh, CD8 T cell activation indeed did decline. Uh, 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 to a greater degree in the valgan cyclovir treated patients compared to uh, uh, placebo. Um, and, and it was an effect that persisted uh, for at least four weeks after we stopped uh, 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 the study drug. Uh, but there were several limitations uh, to this study uh, uh, and many unanswered questions. Uh, so one of the limitations is that valgan cyclovir uh, had too many toxicities to take forward in a larger clinical study. It causes cytopenias. Um, it's uh, teratogenic, um, uh, uh, among other things. Uh, and we also didn't know from this study whether uh, the changes in immune activation that we saw were a consequence of treating CMV or other herpes viruses. Valgan cyclovir also gets EBV, HSV1 and 2, HHV6, KSHV. Um, and so we weren't sure whether this was specific. We think it was uh, mediated by uh, an effect on CMV based on the patterns of herpes virus shedding that we observed in the trial uh, and the fact that val acyclovir was studied several years later, um, which has activity against HSV1 and 2 but not CMV and was found not to have any effects on immune activation. Uh, so we think CMV was playing a role, but we couldn't prove it. Um, we also didn't know whether these results would generalize to the more common uh, 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 people living with HIV with higher CD4 counts on suppressive therapy and less CD8 T cell activation, as we see in the modern era. We also had very few women in the trial, and uh, we didn't know whether the uh, results would uh, uh, generalize uh, uh, to, uh, to women as well. Um, and lastly, and, and, and perhaps most importantly, we didn't know whether treating CMV would affect other immune activation pathways that more strongly predict disease uh, uh, and actually uh, uh, lower non-AIDS morbidity and mortality. And so in the ensuing years, it became clear that, um, that T cell activation, while it was a strong predictor of um, immune activation in the pretreatment era, uh, it was perhaps not the best predictor of morbidity and mortality uh, in individuals uh, with uh, treatment-mediated viral suppression. And so uh, this is um, a, a study uh, that, uh, uh, that really drove this point home from the Insight Network, uh, where they you know, combined um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the placebo or control arms, uh, the control arms of uh, three large uh, uh, a clinical trial, SMART, Esprit, and SILCAT. Um, these are individuals who are uh, suppressed on antiretroviral therapy largely for a long period of time, just uh, uh, following forward. And a single measurement of IL-6 and D-dimer, uh, the inflammatory and coagulation marker respectively, strongly predicted the subsequent uh, risk of disease over the next decade. And so two things to take away here that 
you know, those are the highest immune activation. They had over a 20 percent uh, risk of a serious non-AIDS event, heart attack, stroke, cancer, uh, or death. Um, compared to only about 5 percent in the lower two quartiles. And, they, and so that's a really strong effect and stronger than we see in HIV uninfected individuals uh, where inflammation may also predict uh, disease. Uh, and the second thing is that these curves are continuing to separate over time, suggests that there's likely to be an inflammatory set point within individuals, some people who are at high risk uh, and others uh, who are at uh, uh, relatively low risk and probably don't need an intervention. And so if we conceptualize what our field uh, is now trying to do, uh, it's really to move people in these top two quartiles uh, down here. And that's basically our goal in the modern treatment era. Um, and uh, our own group and many others have tried to characterize the, uh, the specific inflammatory pathways that most strongly predict disease and uh, during uh, treatment-mediated viral suppression. And it turns out that it's more innate markers of immune activation and inflammation that seem to predict uh, the risk of disease more strongly uh, than uh, T-cell activation uh, down here. Uh, what I'm showing you are odds ratios comparing the fourth quartile of each biomarker to the first. Uh, so just a threefold increased risk of, uh, for T-cell activation uh, being in the fourth quartile for mortality. Uh, that's a significant effect, uh, but nowhere near as strong as something like uh, IL-6 um, uh, or soluble TNF receptors. And um, also in the ensuing years, uh, uh, we worked with uh, others at uh, Case Western Reserve, uh, Michael Letterman's group, um, uh, to characterize the immune um, uh, pathways that are associated with CMV serostatus. Uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we found that um, it was primarily in individuals who are CMV seropositive where we see this dramatic expansion of CD8 T cells that we, uh, and the low CD4 to CD8 ratio that we naturally associate with. Uh, HIV infection. That's primarily in people who are CMV seropositive. You don't see as much of that effect in CMV seronegatives. Uh, and the other thing uh, that really stuck out to us is that soluble TNF receptor 2 uh, was also highly increased in individuals uh, who are CMV seropositive. And, uh, and as I'll come to in a second, uh, soluble CNF, uh, TNF receptor 2 also happens to be the strongest uh, predictor of cardiovascular events. Uh, and treated HIV infection uh, of, of most biomarkers that have been assessed to date. Um, and so what about vascular disease? Uh, might CMV actually play a role in contributing to vascular disease? Uh, well, uh, CMV can infect uh, 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 most cell types uh, uh, in the endothelium, uh, the endothelial cells themselves. Um, uh, macrophages within the endothelium, uh, as well as smooth muscle, muscle cells. Uh, and in the transplant population, solid organ transplant, uh, CMV is, uh, 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 there's quite strong evidence that CMV is playing a causal role in atherogenesis, this sort of post-transplant vasculopathy or concentric atherosclerosis that occurs in solid organ transplant patients. Um, uh, you can suppress that by uh, prophylaxing uh, with uh, gancyclovir or valgancyclovir. Uh, and so there's uh, 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 quite uh, strong evidence in transplant that CMV might be contributing to vascular disease. And working with Priscilla Shu, we were uh, 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 the first group to, to uh, show that uh, a link between CMV specific T cell responses uh, and atherosclerosis uh, in the setting of um, uh, treated HIV infection. Uh, uh, what you see here is that both among uh, HIV uninfected individuals in blue uh, and HIV infected individuals in red, uh, those are the highest frequencies of CMV specific T cells, um, uh, had the most atherosclerosis by uh, a carotid intermedia thickness. And interestingly, if you adjust uh, for uh, uh, CMV specific T cell responses, there's no longer an increased risk uh, of. Uh, atherosclerosis uh, and uh, treated HIV infection compared to HIV negatives. And this is um, a very early clue to us that perhaps CMV might be an important mediator of vascular disease in HIV. Uh, and more compelling data came from uh, the Italians uh, more recently. Um, 
where uh, uh, they compared CMV seropositive uh, in individuals to CMV seronegatives uh, on antiretroviral therapy. And while CMV serostatus uh, did not predict uh, AIDS events, um, it strongly predicted non-AIDS events. Uh, and, and the greatest effect was for cardiovascular disease with a 2.3-fold increased risk of cardiovascular events in those who were CMV seropositive. We've also become very interested in whether CMV might be contributing uh, to uh, type 2 diabetes risk. Um, uh, just as there's an increased risk of vascular disease in the post-transplant period, uh, there's a quite striking increase in type 2 diabetes that does not appear to be entirely explained by the steroids that people receive um, uh, in the post-transplant period. Um, uh, and, and some have hypothesized a potential contribution to CMV uh, in that setting as well. And that's interesting because CMV is expressed uh, in adipose tissue. It's uh, the fourth leading tissue for CMV DNA levels um, uh, in a recent um, uh, study uh, using autopsy tissues. Um, and uh, there's also a dramatic infiltration of terminally differentiated CD8 T cells into adipose tissue, uh, particularly in people uh, living with HIV. Um, uh, uh, th these are the types of T cells um, that tend to be enriched for CMV-specific uh, T cell responses. The HIV-specific ones tend to be less terminally differentiated. We also see increased adipose tissue fibrosis in HIV, um, and uh, that, we think, uh, may uh, increase the risk of um, uh, fibrosis of the adipose tissue, uh, per, uh, leading to uh, uh, ectopic fat distribution in other organs like the liver, uh, leading to non-alcoholic uh, steatohepatitis and uh, insulin resistance. This has been described in the context of obesity, and we think it may be one of the uh, key mechanisms in HIV. And we've wondered whether CMV may be playing a role in this process. And um, uh, given that, uh, we decided to go back uh, to that original study I shared with you. Um, as I started my own lab a few years ago, we, uh, uh, we have just started to now go back uh, to the plasma samples uh, and assess some of the uh, immunologic pathways that we uh, think more strongly predict disease. We started first with soluble TNF receptor 2 because it was the strongest predictor of uh, vascular events in treated HIV, and lo and behold, uh, there was about an entire quartile reduction in soluble TNF receptor 2 uh, within the first four weeks uh, of valgancyclovir. Um, and uh, this uh, approached, uh, this is significant between arms at week four and approached significance between arms at week eight. Um, this is the, the strongest uh, effect uh, on, on this pathway of immune activation of any immune-based intervention uh, attempted in the last uh, 10 years uh, to, uh, to decrease immune activation in treated HIV infections. This is a pretty dramatic effect, um, and it's uh, stronger. Uh, and this corresponds uh, to about a 22 percent uh, decreased risk in MI and stroke risk uh, uh, when comparing to observational studies. Notably, this is a stronger effect than was seen uh, with statins when uh, in treated HIV. And, by the way, there's a clinical endpoint trial underway now to test whether statins uh, decrease uh, cardiovascular events in, in, in treated HIV, um, even in people who don't need them for high cholesterol. Uh, so I think we're in the ballpark of the type of effect size that might actually make a difference. Um, these differences were also signi uh, significant, uh, uh, formally significant between arms when we control for concurrent changes in viral load. HIV viral load. Uh, we saw more modest uh, declines in soluble TNF receptor 1 uh, uh, in, in, in this study, and um, uh, uh, notably, this is the strongest uh, predictor of uh, type 2 diabetes, incident type 2 diabetes in treated HIV. Uh, so these are you know, some of the pathways that we think are um, uh, contributing to the diseases that uh, a CMV might uh, plausibly drive. And in fact, uh, uh, this effect, uh, while not formally statistically different than placebo, uh, was uh, significantly uh, you know, lower than uh, baseline uh, in the valgancyclovir arm. And this magnitude of an effect would correspond to about a 50 percent decreased risk of type 2 diabetes, to give you a sense uh, of the effect size. It also reduced uh, soluble CD163 levels. Um, 
uh, uh, this was formally significant between arms when we adjusted for concurrent uh, HIV viral load. Uh, and um, notably, um, uh, soluble CD163 was the key biomarker associated with vascular inflammation in that uh, paper by Steve Grinspoon's uh, group uh, in JAMA uh, several years ago. Uh, so we think we're hitting the, uh, the biologic pathways that are mediating uh, the, uh, the diseases uh, of interest. And, and then lastly, soluble ICAM-1, uh, which is an uh, endothelial dysfunction marker, also appeared to uh, decrease uh, significantly in the valgan cyclovir arm, uh, although uh, we did not see evidence uh, for a difference between groups uh, uh, for other markers of endothelial function. Uh, interestingly, this uh, effect is abrogated when we, when we adjust uh, for uh, biomarkers in the, in, in the TNF pathway, suggesting a possible mediation. So all this is great, but I've just told you that valgan cyclovir is too toxic, so why do we care? Uh, well, there are now better agents uh, uh, to treat CMV that are now available. Um, and uh, one of those agents is uh, uh, Latermavir, uh, which is just recently approved uh, by the FDA, uh, based on this study here in the New England Journal uh, in 2017. It was given uh, to uh, a, a stem cell a transplant um, uh, uh, patients. Uh, for 14 weeks um, uh, 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 to prevent uh, CMV and organ disease. Uh, you can see it did a pretty good job of that. It also decreased uh, mortality in that study for just 14 weeks uh, of latermavir uh, and uh, uh, did not have uh, uh, really any uh, uh, significant uh, toxicities beyond what they observed in the placebo arm. Um, uh, uh, except for uh, uh, a few uh, episodes of uh, tachycardia, which are still being uh, uh, evaluated. Um, and so all this has led us uh, uh, to start a, uh, a large uh, uh, clinical uh, trial in the uh, AIDS clinical trials group. Uh, A5383 is the number we got. Uh, I still have to try and remember the number. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, but I, uh, this is a study of latermavir to reduce immune activation in treated HIV. Um, we're studying people who have been suppressed in antiretrovirals for at least a year, and we're stratifying or sampling by CD4 count, uh, uh, a third with low CD4s, uh, and the remainder uh, with uh, higher T cells to see if it generalized that population. Uh, we're uh, also um, uh, stratifying uh, by gender. Uh, we want at least a third cis women uh, in uh, uh, in, in the trial uh, uh, to start to look at gender, gender differences. Um, uh, women do respond to viruses in different ways than men, at least with HIV, uh, from an immunologic standpoint. Uh, we're going to treat people for a much longer period of time, 48 weeks, uh, uh, followed by a washout uh, a period to see what, how durable uh, the effect of treatment is. And we've embedded uh, multiple sub-studies um, including on HIV virology to see if there are effects in the viral reservoir, as Sarah Gianella and Davy Smith have hypothesized, um, FDG PET CT scans with Ahmed Tawakal in Harvard um, uh, with an NHLBI R01 being submitted uh, to fund that, uh, a fat biopsy study um, uh, with John Curta at uh, University, B University of Vanderbilt, uh, uh, to look uh, uh, to see if uh, we decrease the amount of CD8 infiltration to the fat and whether this relates to improvements uh, in surrogate markers of insulin resistance, as well as a, a lumbar puncture sub-study, uh, uh, Scott Latondra at, at UCSD has linked uh, CMV antibody titers to uh, HIV-associated neurocognitive dysfunction. So we'll see if uh, treating CMV potentially has a, a, a uh, a benefit uh, and, and, and um, uh, markers of inflammation in the uh, cerebrospinal fluid. Um, and then uh, locally, we've also, uh, in a, an R01 submitted uh, to NIDDK, uh, will uh, be looking at the effects on uh, uh, the, the gut, uh, uh, in particular whether the gut bar there's gut uh, improvements in gut barrier disruption and, uh, and immune activation in the gut. Uh, we've um, recently seen in a mouse model of um, humanized mouse model of HIV that uh, CMV might be contributing to gut barrier defects and microbial translocation. So this is a, uh, an opportunity to test that experimentally. Uh, so I should mention that uh, in addition to the ACTG uh, trial and the multiple uh, rounds of review that are required to get uh, this proposal, all the sub-studies sub through. There are four linked R01s uh, uh, to this uh, uh, trial. Um, 
uh, spanning three different institutes, uh, as well as a Merck investigator-initiated grant. Uh, and there are also investigators from several other CIFARs involved in this study, including those I mentioned from UCSD, Harvard, and Vanderbilt. Um, so to conclude, uh, valgan cyclovir uh, substantially reduces multiple immune activation pathways in treated HIV. This corresponds to a markedly reduced risk of MI and type 2 diabetes um, if we're to extrapolate from observational studies, about 22 to 50 percent risk, respectively. Now, it's unclear if valgan cyclovir effect uh, that we've observed reflects suppression of other herpes viruses. It's also unclear if these results will generalize to those with higher CD4 counts in women. Um, and it's unclear if CMV, if treating CMV will reduce surrogate markers of cardiometabolic disease, but we really hope to address uh, all of these questions in the upcoming uh, Latermigra trial. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll stop and acknowledge uh, all the people who contributed uh, to this work. Uh, 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 Gabby Beck uh, Engesser in the lab who, who did most of the recent uh, ELISA work. Um, uh, Frank Maldarelli did some single copy assay work uh, um, uh, that I didn't have time to share with you. Should also uh, give a shout out to Erica Marquez de Menezes uh, at Vitalent. Um, so she's my uh, CIFAR mentee, uh, and I have a career mentor relationship with her. But as we were talking about these data, um, uh, it occurred to us that maybe the uh, extracellular vesicle work that she's been doing uh, 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 might be um, uh, might be interesting to test in the context of this trial. And so uh, she's been actively uh, studying samples uh, from the Valgan cyclovir trial now and generating some really interesting data that hopefully she'll be able to present at a CIFAR forum uh, uh, soon. Um, and uh, uh, all, all my other colleagues, including the CIFAR, uh, uh, the ACTG, and all the uh, funding sources. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Um, I assume that Steve Grinspoon is happy that you waited a few years before you came out with your uh, CMV story before he got the uh, <laughs> review study started. Um, so I'm just curious that given that CMV is looking like a pretty bad actor in, in a lot of these ways, what's the status of CMV vaccines development? Is, is, is there work going on? Yeah, uh, so there's a there's a, actually a parallel study uh, in the uh, ACTG that uh, that's being led by Sarah Gianella uh, and Davy Smith that that's looking at a therapeutic vaccine for CMV to see if it uh, has some of the uh, same effects. It's not quite as extensive as this in terms of all the sub studies, but uh, hopefully it will give us. Uh, um, yeah, some insight into this. If that worked, that would be a home run yeah, because yeah. Um, you just have to give someone, uh, you know, a, a shot or two uh, once, uh, and then they're good for the rest uh, rest of their lives. Um, I think there's some question as to whether the CD8 T cells um, are uh, are actually contributing to disease uh, or are ameliorating disease. Um, uh, it could be that boosting an ineffective CD8 T cell response could make things worse in terms of vascular disease, uh, causing more inflammation. Um, uh, uh, on the other hand, if you're boosting uh, uh, the cells that are actually controlling uh, a, a virus replication, it, it could be a good thing. So it will be yeah, really yeah, interesting to yeah. see what the study shows. That's Warner. So, Peter, very nice talk. I, I'd like to ask you about two extremes. You talked about the Sudi mangabees uh, and how they have very low uh, inflammation and immune activation. But isn't there, you've described human Sudis. Uh, and are these individuals, uh, do they have extremely low CMV responses? Uh, that's a, that's a, it's a good question. Uh, they, um, so there are these individuals that we call viremic non-progressors. Uh, high viral loads for over a decade that uh, have preserved CD4 counts uh, and uh, no signs of progression to AIDS. Uh, extremely rare, um, probably less than, you know, 0.1% of all people uh, living with HIV. Um, and we've characterized uh, uh, some of them uh, locally uh, here in, uh, at, uh, through the, in the SCOPE cohort. Um, and uh, they, they tend to have preserved um, uh, 
uh, HIV-specific and CMV-specific T-cell responses. Um, uh, I wouldn't say that they're uh, more uh, robust um, uh, or less robust. Um, I will say that they do have a strikingly uh, a, a high expansion of um, CD8 counts uh, um, uh, compared to uh, um, your average person living with HIV. Uh, and it, it, it's probably likely the case that, you know, the absolute number of CMV-specific uh, CD8 cells is actually much higher um, uh, in, in those individuals. Um, and, and the mechanisms explaining this are still unclear. Uh, we think it may have something to do with the anatomic uh, location of uh, HIV replication in the body, that it, in these individuals it's preferentially occurring in effector sites uh, like the gut um, uh, and, and not uh, in the inductive lymphoid tissues um, uh, where HIV preferentially replicates in, in most other individuals. And what about another extreme, the other, the opposite extreme, and that is the immunological non-responders who have high inflammation, high immune activation, um, and don't have a recovery of their CD4 count, are they particularly exuberant CMV responders? Yeah, so uh, first I should take a step back and say that you know, our surrogate markers uh, for, uh, for detecting, characterizing CMV activity are very poor. Um, we don't know what any of them mean. Uh, so uh, if you have high CMV-specific CD8 frequencies, um, uh, it could be that there's more virus you know, replication. Uh, it could mean that you have a more robust uh, uh, immune response against the virus or some combination of the two. Um, the same thing with the uh, IgG uh, titers. Um, uh, in fact, Sarah Gianella did a study recently that showed that those of the highest CMV IgG titers uh, actually had the least um, uh, CMV shedding in the semen. Uh, so, um, so it's hard to know what to make of, um, uh, uh, of the surrogate markers. Um, uh, that said, uh, um, CMV shedding appears to be much higher, if that's a better you know, surrogate marker for the extent of replication in the body. Um, that seems to be associated with lower CD4 counts. And so I think that the immunologic non-responders, we, we studied the most extreme population in that Valgan cyclovir study. I suspect that that's where, you know, CNV is playing the greatest role. I suspect the role will be uh, less uh, in individuals with uh, greater CD4 counts, but, you know, we won't know that until we look, you know, and test it. Great. Yeah. Oh, last question, Melanie. Great talk. Um, how, how relevant do you think, or how much worried should we do? Should we be about all this without HIV and normal aging? And what yeah. do you think that HIV is adding? Is it just a second insult, or what is the interaction between the two viruses? Yeah, it's a great question. So CMV has been implicated uh, in the pathogenesis of aging uh, for uh, you know, quite a long time, um, and, and uh, Graham Powlack and others have put this forward and. Um, now, the, um, I, I, I think my own, my own view on this is that CMV is uh, likely playing uh, an important role when there's subtle immunodeficiency and the immune system is not able to uh, fully suppress uh, virus replication. Um, and there's a continuum between no immune response, which uh, gets you CMV and organ disease in the setting of advanced AIDS, um, and then there's a, a, a young adult uh, who's CMV seropositive, totally healthy immune response, um, uh, and there's no consequence at all uh, because the virus is super well controlled. Uh, and then there's maybe treated HIV uh, um, uh, infection or perhaps aging uh, where the immune response is not fully capable of suppressing HIV, uh, CMV optimally, and it's allowed to cause inflammation in the tissues. And so I think I think CMV is playing a role both in aging and in HIV. I think the mechanisms by which the immune system fails to control CMV are likely distinct in aging and, and, and CMV. It's possible they could be additive effects, um, but the mechanisms I'm pretty sure are going to be likely different uh, to explain the uh, incomplete CMV control in both those situations. Great. Thank you, Peter. <laughs>